Hey everybody, what's up? And welcome to episode 11 of the Revive Yourself podcast. Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Have you got a health issue that just won't go away no matter what you try? Then welcome to the Revive Yourself podcast, where we reveal the secrets to long-lasting health by getting to the root cause of problems that no one else is talking about. So you can have more energy, clear skin, healthier hair, a leaner physique, more confidence, and most importantly, do the things you love and live the life you deserve. Here's your host, Ryan Martin. So, welcome guys to episode 12 of the Revive Yourself podcast. Today's episode is with Katerina Rayburn. She's a yogi, a yoga instructor, and she teaches all around yoga. She actually has retreats as well um, all around Europe. Um, some, apparently, her favorite ones are in Barcelona, but there she has loads of good retreats all around. And if you go on her website at www.katerinarayburnyoga.com you'll see all of the retreats there and everything about there so today I just want to take a look into yoga and how powerful it is not just for the body but for the mind as well and so Katerina is someone who I've actually practiced with myself and me and my girlfriend really do like the way that she goes about her classes and how she teaches and actually the energy that she actually has when she teaches so I thought no better way than to get someone to explain to you the benefits of yoga and how it's helped them and how it helps others than to get her on. So I hope you'll enjoy this, guys. For those of you that um, have been intrigued by yoga but haven't actually given it a go, this would be great for you. And even for those of you that do take a daily practice or are quite quite um, well-versed in yoga, and some of you may even be a yogi, then this is going to be a great interview for you too. So without further ado, here she is, and enjoy the show. So welcome, Katarina. How have you been? Very good, thank you. (laughs) Cool. So what many people don't know about you is you actually graduated with a physics degree, and you're actually a trained actress as well before you become a yoga instructor. Um, So starting at the beginning of of your yoga journey, how did you really get into it? Um... I think having done drama school, so I was sort of always working the body, doing sort of physical practices, whether it was dance or sort of movement-based things, we started sort of putting bits of yoga into our our drama training. Um, It was a compulsory part of the course, and I kind of never really clicked with it at that point. I just sort of saw it as a set of stretches and didn't really kind of link how it was sort of helping the mind as well. Um, So that was my first kind of experience, and then sort of forgot about it for a while, sort of pursuing acting in London and um, got to a point where I was in a bit of a a sort of a a rut, so to say, and wasn't doing much acting work and was sort of having to fill my time with sort of very unfulfilling jobs. And um, a friend of mine took me to a yoga class and it was a lot more sort of dynamic than anything I'd done before. And being a quite sort of physically active person, I think that kind of really attracted me to it. And I sort of started going regularly and then was actually like, oh, wow, this is this is really, really great. And um, the way I feel afterwards was like nothing I sort of experienced on the yoga I'd done before. So then started experiencing more different styles and started having like a much greater appreciation for the practice and how it made me feel physically and mentally. Okay. So, so I'd say like... Um... You you went to then study in India, is that correct? Yeah. And so, what did that what did that um, partake, for example? Well, so I I was getting to a point where I was practicing loads, and I kind of wanted to take it further, and I I needed something more, and so I started looking into doing teacher trainings. Not necessarily thinking that I was going to become a teacher because I was still pursuing acting at the time, but just wanted something more in depth, and I wanted to know kind of the philosophy behind it and the theories that I was hearing teachers in classes mentioning. So I went to India, I had sort of a a month free away from other work I was doing. And um, that was, I don't know, it was amazing. It was all encompassing. So it was the the philosophies, it was was intense practice. It was just being able to sort of link the two. And also with that, you had to learn the anatomy and physiology. So learning just more about 
the benefits of it and, and what it was actually sort of doing during the practice. And it, it was, for me, it was more of a, what I learned mentally. I knew I was physically strong, so it wasn't, for some people, the actual training itself was just more physically draining. For me, it was learning stuff about myself. It was like a month of therapy, like figuring stuff out about things you're holding on to. And, and, and I think it was very cathartic at a point where I got to a point of like, oh my God, I need to do something. I'm going crazy, like stuck in London, not necessarily getting the jobs I wanted to get. So yeah, it was uh, all very good timing. <laughs> yeah, that I mean, so I've actually I was actually coming to this a little bit later, but we're, as soon as you've gone in that direction, I'll just say that's that sort of thing about um, yoga and being a yogi. I suppose it the yogi philosophy goes a lot deeper than just spending an hour stretching, right? It's uh, yeah. so like if you talk about a little bit about what it's taught you in, in life and energy and balance. I mean, has your yeah. thinking changed a lot since you become deeply so. involved in it? I think just. I don't, I don't, I still now don't have a daily meditation practice where I will literally just sit and be still for half an hour a day. I, when I go on retreats, I, I incorporate that in my retreats. So I, I do it myself and, that, and I feel great. But I think using the breath in the yoga practice and the physical practice is so important. It, it, no matter what pose you're doing, if you're how deep you're into it, if you're just breathing and you're just connecting if you think physically the head and the body is collected by the throat, which is where you're breathing, it literally is the body and the mind become sort of one. And it's just that repetition, anything that sort of repeats itself like that. And if that breath is strong and being repeated at a constant pace, you just find a sense of calm. And I think doing that, obviously having a weekly practice or a daily practice is great. And But then doing that on an intense scale on a training, it, it made it sort of things started to, to shift for me and, and, I was a quite a highly sort of energized person anyway, a little bit, a little bit crazy. And I think it definitely took the crazy out. It definitely calmed me down. It made me sometimes think about things or way in ways in which I would react that were maybe to do with my character traits. And I've sort of learned when you learn about the chakras and things and, or not necessarily thinking about it in terms of that, in terms of the anatomy, like where you hold things and what, um, and that's a default way to react. And so, you know, at times where I might have just gone boosh and just like gone crazy and, you know, reacted. Now I can stop and think, okay, maybe I'm reacting like this because of something that I'm feeling myself rather than something someone's done to me. So it just sort of makes you reassess how you how you think about problem solving and issues like that. Basically. Yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. No, no, 100%. I mean, so talking about we coming across, I mean, people on, as the audience will know, like we, we approach things differently here. It's like, say, people would say the alternative approach, but it's approaches that have been going on for thousands and thousands of years. And uh, so when people start looking at things from a different perspective, um, it's sort of, as you said then, the breathing aspect is hugely important. And, uh, and when you start to realise that you hold a lot of your emotions in certain parts of your body, I mean that's a that's that's quite a big um, say like a realisation for people because we're all so busy in our heads in the Western world um, compared to actually listening to the body and listening to a lot of the things that are going on, and that's one of the things. I mean, having taken one of your classes, I know you you do go into that at the start. We do quite a lot of um, of breathing, um, and so like if if you said. So if I said to you the difference between how you dealt with problems now compared to how you used to deal with them, how would that be different for people that are not used to yoga or, or, or used to these principles involving breathing, etc.? Um, I think in terms of in terms of knowing what your default is and knowing, say, that you are someone that if a problem occurs, you just go into yourself. And you and you sort of you shut down. If you can realize that that's the kind of person you are, and you can figure that out through a yoga practice, maybe something a teacher says triggers something, and you realize, oh god, I've totally just shut down right now. And, and they, you know, if it's a, a practice where they're asking you to really expand your body, so physically you're trying to open, and that feels really unnatural, then you will know that maybe you're someone that's normally quite closed. So if you then come into a situation not in a yoga class where you know you're presented with a a time when you need to be very open and very sort of like in a situation that would make you feel vulnerable you can use 
you know, you can you can think back to the yoga practice. You can think, right, what was it that I was doing then? You know, I'm, I'm breathing. I'm just focusing my mind. I'm feeling safe. I'm feeling grounded. I can allow myself to go into space that would normally make me feel vulnerable because I know I've done it in the yoga practice. I've done it in class. I can do it in, in a real life situation. So I think you can try and transfer it over into that um, and use your, well, some people say it's a little bit, you know, cliche or cringy, but, you know, the, 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 the yoga practice, the yoga mat is a reflection of yourself. It's a mirror of yourself. And what comes out in your practice is often the things that are there in everyday life, but you don't get that opportunity to sort of see them or to, to work through them. So, um, yeah. So it's time, yeah. So it's time to sort of, it's time for yourself. Really. Exactly. Exactly. As much as you're in a group of people, really, you know, they're just there to sort of that we're all in, in it together. But it's it's in your mind. It's in your mats. In your practice. You know, you could have your eyes closed. It doesn't matter what's going on around you. Um, it's just a moment to yeah, completely just take a little bit of self self awareness. Hundred percent. And so. What would you say to some people who, who are maybe nervous or worried about coming to a, a yoga class or starting yoga because they might be a little bit self-conscious that they're not good enough and don't want to look stupid, for example? Like, yeah. what, what would you what would you say to people like that? Um, I guess that connects well with, like, it is about you and it's not about what's going on. I think that people that want to come to yoga, they're not there to kind of be showy and to, like, to be comparing each other. You're coming because something's maybe drawn you, maybe some sort of, because uh, it isn't everyone knows yoga's got a bit of spirituality connected to it and whether you're you know not spiritual at all there's obviously you know that in the back of your head so it kind of comes with that that it, it's a place of non-judgment like you're not there to judge people you're there to kind of leave your ego at the door and just I mean me especially when I started practicing like I was never afraid to fall off my mat and knock into the person next to me some people the <laughs> idea of that is mortifying yeah. and um so they won't try the things that they risk that happening in but you just need to just forget all of that. I mean, keep your eyes on your mat. Don't worry what's going on. And I always sort of say, like, it's not about how the pose looks or the aesthetic of the pose. Like, you can be in the deepest forward fold and you can be, like, not even being able to touch your knees, but you're still feeling that pose in the same way, physically and maybe mentally, spiritually. So it doesn't matter. It's 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 what you're getting from it. So. I mean, obviously, people do. It, it is it is hard if you, you know you feel oh, I'm not flexible, but it's not about being flexible. It's about kind of what you're experiencing on the way to that flexibility, like what you learn about yourself and your body, and eventually, you know, just through practice, you will get a little bit more flexible. You will get a little bit stronger, and then those things start to become a little bit more accessible. Um, but obviously, the first few classes, it's always a little bit like, oh, where am I? I, you know. Yeah, no, I can attest to that. I mean, <laughs> having having been someone who played like professional sport and didn't do any sort of stretching for a long time, it's something that I knew I had to come into. So, anyone listening, trust me, you're never going to be worse than what I was if you start. So <laughs> it's not a problem, and uh, it's just I think one of those things um, about being worried, as you said there, it's really I found, especially at where we practice at Frame, it's, a re- it's not a judgmental place at all. In fact, it's quite the opposite, and everyone's sort of just in it with you rather than yeah, the, and exactly. um, yeah, and and um, yeah. I mean, it's it's something where I think it's yeah, it's quite a, a good group dynamic. Um, so if someone wanted to make, for example, when you started to make significant progress in both the physical and mental aspects, how many times a week would you say you need to practice really? So I started once a week. I started once a week for maybe a couple of months. And then I started to want more. And, and um, I maybe I started going three times a week. And then I remember asking a teacher that I used to go to quite a lot, like, what do I have to do now to, like, improve? Like, I feel like I was almost plateauing. Like, there was things. there are things that you then aren't getting from a class. Because obviously a class, it's, it's constantly moving. You're not getting to sort of stop and ask questions. And... Um, then it was a matter of going on to workshops so you know you get sort of two hour workshops that teachers put on that studios put on where it focuses on a specific thing so then you can use those whether it's a a strength workshop or just a backbend workshop you know something that where you can start to hone in but otherwise just literally practicing regularly you start to see improvements like even if it's just a once a week practice you know you look forward to that week and you and you know, you remember how it makes you feel if it is a, something that you know that's going to resonate positively with you. Um, 
but yeah, I'd say, you know, start start once a week. And if you feel like, yeah, this is for you, then three times a week. I mean, if you can fit it in, you know, every day, but obviously that's not ideal. But they there is a thing called the um, MDR, which is the minimum daily requirement, which we learned on our teach training. So if you do have a, you know, you are busy, 15 minutes where you just do sort of five minutes of sun salutations, um, five minutes of breathing or seated meditation, and then a five minute shavasana. And that sort of 15 minutes, you know, is just encompassing the whole practice, a little snippet, basically. Like maintenance, yeah, okay. Yeah. So um, I had a question on that. I just literally jumped up my mind. I was going to say, um, you said, so not every day to the, to the full. You, you have days to rest and recover? I mean, it depends what kind of a practice you're doing. If you're doing a dynamic practice, for example, like rocket or, you know, these are stanga based practices, which are quite physically demanding. Um, right, so if you can just go into that quickly, the difference. Mm -hmm. So, if, for example, on your, on your um, class timetable, as it is in the studio, there's yeah. different types of yoga. Um, yeah. So, for example, ones that beginners should probably start with, and the, like, so you say uh, you've got flow classes, etc. Can you just quickly explain a little bit difference yeah. between them? So, I mean, so you're, there's always this word vinyasa, and vinyasa just literally means breath with movement. So it's a it's a, a style of yoga which you will be moving in, and that can encompass that could encompass rockets, which is also a moving practice, and a flow is also vinyasa. Um, so. I guess it depends on the on the teacher teaching it, but I mean, when it has a name like a, like Rocky or something, it means that it's it's got a sort of set structure, so to say, of poses. When it's a vinyasa or it says flow, and it doesn't specify the style, then the teacher kind of has free reign to kind of create a kind of choreography in any which way they want. I think people, if they're new, may be going to something which is more structured, like Rocket or like a Stanger, where it's a set sequence as much as it can be, is good way of sort of seeing each week or oh, that pose I remember that pose from last week and it feels a little bit better this week or you know and your mind kind of knows where it's going so you're not less having to look around being like oh I'm in the right pose because you kind of start to learn the routine so I think that's how I started I started practicing rocket which every week was basically basically the same routine so then each week you pick up a new cue within a pose of where your body should be um Whereas, you know, if you go to vinyasa, yeah, it's great and you're going to move and you're going to breathe and you're going to feel some physical and mental benefits, but it might not be the same each week. So you might, you know, know little of lots, but not a lot of one thing kind of thing. But then it's hard to tell with timetables because my timetables might say vinyasa, but I still might teach a similar routine each week because vinyasa can be interpreted by the teacher. So I guess you just need to go to the studios and suss out what ones, you know, stay the same, or to start with, try to go to something that is is specifically rocket or is specifically Ashtanga or something. Um, but I don't think that necessarily, I mean, obviously you can go to beginner's yoga classes and learn the kind of fundamentals, but I think that it's not necessarily a bad thing to go to a class and not to be able to do everything because then you can see your progression and you can also sometimes be inspired by what's going on around you. Like I never started with a beginner's yoga class, but then it depends, you know, whether you start with a little bit of core strength to begin with and maybe you need to build that up first before you then start going. But you can quite quickly tell whether a beginner class is, isn't enough for you. Yeah. I would say to always challenge yourself. It's no, it's, it's for me, it's not fun to just sort of come out of a class and be like, yeah, that was, that was, you know, that was that was good, but I don't. I'm not taking much away from it. I think you, yeah. Yeah. So, and, and that's the thing as well. There's always more you can do, right? Oh, it's constant. Yeah, you're never, you're never ever going to be, you know, that, that with yoga. There's, oh my god, you you think you've done something, and then you see someone else doing something like ten <laughs> times more and intense. Yeah. yeah. No, it's just never ending. You're always learning with it. So it's what, like what makes it so good. Yeah, it's like that journey. So it's. It's sort of like the journey when you come on this sort of journey of uh, yoga of, of maybe um, natural health. I suppose mm -hmm. it, it's it's all all sort of encompassing. It, it encompasses different different aspects. And something else I was going to say: since you've taken up yoga, has it had an effect on any other parts of your lifestyle, like maybe your food choices Definitely, or yeah. Yeah, anything like that? Yeah, I think I think like the immediate. So when I first got back from my first training in India, um, it was. Things like when we were on the training, we were advised not to 
have too much caffeine or not to drink too much alcohol, mainly because we were up at 5 a.m. every morning. So, you know, we just couldn't be out late and, we, and you know, that hangover wasn't on the cards. But um, coffee is going gonna, is gonna to bring you up. And if you're trying to calm, bring yourself down and meditate and things, then we would advise not to have too much coffee. But now I still have coffee, but I just think I think of it as more of a special thing that I'm using because it's because I love the taste of it, but also because I just need that little bit of a perk. But I'm try, try not to have it like first thing in the morning is like a that's it. I need my coffee right now. Um, and then lots of yoga, yogis, you know, uh, sort of. It's all about ahimsa, which is is one of the um, the limbs of Ashtanga, and it, it means non harming. So you go down the vegetarian route, or sometimes even the vegan route. And um, so I've kind of like taken bits of that. And that wasn't like a sudden, like, oh, my God, I do yoga now. I've got to be a vegetarian. I've got to be a, a vegan. It was just more that also it, it, you feel like your body works quite efficiently and quite quickly. And sometimes heavy meats and things, it slows you down. And, and you can feel that in your practice. And you can feel that, you know, things aren't ticking efficiently as they could. Um, so I think also when I was in India, it was advised not to eat meat anyway. So we, we didn't eat meat just for not getting deli belly. And then that kind of was a month of that. But then when I got back, I was like, well, actually, I haven't missed it this that much. And so sort of it went from there. And But you don't want to be, you don't want to be anal about it. Like, you know, it's, I know we've had a conversation about it before. Like, it's just what feels right. And, you know, if suddenly, you know, your body's craving it, then you, you have it. But I just think it's becoming aware and appreciating what feels good and what doesn't and where it's come from. And just, yeah. So I definitely have, changed and even in terms of now that I teach yoga seven days a week like just your timetable I I am out less because I have to be up and teach and you can't you know you just can't do it if you're exhausted or if you're hungover like it's just yeah, yeah. no fun so that that's just happened because it's it makes sense I haven't said right I'm not going to drink anymore it's just about moderating and sitting it around your your, your, your lifestyle doesn't doesn't fit in with a, a healthy lifestyle, right? It's mm-hmm. uh, it's uh, as much as everyone likes to have fun. It's uh, it's um, also you know because you just don't feel great. You don't feel yourself. Um, but yeah, as you said, we've had a conversation around maybe food before. But it's all about what what feels right for you at the time and, and what yeah. and what your body wants you to have. And from my experience, exactly, um, yeah. I say I sort of coined the phrase the flexitarian which is basically yeah. whatever I need or whatever I feel my body needs at that time and I completely understand um, and especially with meats can be very heavy can sit heavy in people and uh, if you're very active I can understand why you may not have uh, in your diet so that's so much and to be honest with you a lot of people don't need as much meat as what they think and yeah. with the whole paleo thing people sort of eat meat as if it's going out of fashion um, yeah. so it's not something you need but as much as what some people, it depends on what they try one, but um, when you're talking about caffeine and alcohol, um, yeah, that's, it's, well, so in a, in a, for example, for someone who plays sport and they also bring a yoga practice or meditation practice for, to their, to their, um, to their, their regime, it's like the working, the yoga is sort of the working in compared to the working out, would you, would you sort of, so it's like the yin and the yang, it balances you out, obviously some yoga practices are quite hard, yeah, but they they also can have quite a rather than a draining effect, they can have quite a stimulating effect. Definitely, definitely. Like although you are meditating, and that naturally calms you. Especially uh, a dynamic practice, which is what I I dominantly teach. You do leave with this feeling of like euphoria. And um, I was actually at a retreat recently, and I was sharing a room with another teacher who had a daily meditation, and like it was it was like forty five minutes that she would do daily, a little bit of chanting and just straight meditation, and she would come out of this meditation and said, she's like, this is like better than taking any drug I've ever taken. Yeah. And it, she just had this glow about her. And I, and I can't necessarily, I can, I, I can understand and I can I completely believe, but I don't have that meditation practice to have experienced it myself. But I know when I've done lead meditations or when I've been to a, a practice where I've completely got in the zone and, you know, my breathing's been there afterwards, you're just literally buzzing. And it's, it, it, it releases they say it's this thing called soma, which is like spiritual adrenaline, and um, it's from the. They say, well, I mean, they don't, it's not necessarily. It's not. They say it is a is a true thing, but I guess soma is what they call it instead of adrenaline, and it's released apparently from the pituitary gland, and um, you get it when you do inversions, so handstands and things when your head's below your heart and you're 
you're doing, you know, that's why they have inversion therapy because all these kinds of things do release that kind of like buzz, that natural buzz. Um, so yeah, you definitely, although you're, you know, you're meditating and you're feeling calm, you do feel invigorated if you do a dynamic practice for sure. Yeah. And then it sort of takes, takes away the need for some of these. Uh, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Some of these things. So uh, that, and that's sort of the whole point. If, if you want to, if you're going down this, sort of journey of living a more natural life when you start doing these practices you sometimes it's um it's not the more we add it's the what we take away that can really yeah. benefit us and because definitely and show what might have been being suppressed by those things 100 percent um i've definitely found that in yoga um just talking from my personal experience there a couple of times where i've been like definitely come out um and been feeling invigorated I mean it has been times where it's been the opposite but it definitely <laughs> does yeah. invigorate you and it sort of takes away the need for any sort of chemical synthetic um, yeah. need for sort of drinks etc so so, so, so it, I'd, I'd say that definitely anyone who, who think about going and doing yoga give it a try um, Katarina is someone you could definitely go and have a great class with just to um just because at the end of your at the end of your yoga practice, you always say something. Um, I don't know if it's if you don't mind sharing it with us. I think it's it's been it's quite a nice phrase that you that you uh, come out with. Do you know what I'm talking about? Keep practicing. You say that, but you also say. Oh yes, I think I do know what you mean. So um, so is uh, this is that your would you say sort sort of your message to the world? Um, what the when I um the um. So, uh, oh, is it about about effort? No, no, you say keep. Yeah, you say. Oh, keep, yeah, yeah, keep yeah. practicing, and all is coming. All is coming. That one. Yeah. yeah. I just think it's what Patabi Joy said, which is one of the like original yoga gurus, um, and it just it just it could be physical, it can be mental, it can be spiritual, it can be put into any way that you want to make it personal to yourself, but you only get out what you put in. So, you know, it's, it, and, and it, again, links to what you said before, like there is no end to it. You just keep on going and you'll just keep learning more and you'll keep finding more out about yourself and um, physically, mentally, all of it. So yeah, no, I think that's definitely, yeah, definitely something that I would, yeah. I mean, that's why it's, it's something I said after every class, every class I've taught, I can't remember not saying it. And I, I did it in my first exam that I did for yoga, and I haven't ever not done it. It's, so um, yeah, it stuck with me when yeah. you say it. Yeah, which is it's good. It's something I, I believe in as well. It's it's almost like kaizen, continual improvement. Um, yeah, yeah. Which is really, really, it's a nice message to put out there. So, just um, if if people want to find you, uh, Katerina, um, websites etc. Katerina uh, Rayburn Yoga dot com. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, and so if they want to get a class, or your class and timetables on there. All my class and timetables on there. Yeah, and um, contacts, email. So if you, do you do personal sessions, sessions as well. Yeah. Cool. Do do one to ones. Yeah. And also recently, you've been out in Greece and Bali. Is that correct? Greece. Yeah, I just got back from Greece a couple of days ago, and then I'm off to Bali in March. So I've um, recently teamed up with a best friend of mine who actually took me to that first yoga class that I went to that got me hooked. Um, she does the food. I do the yoga. and We've sort of formed a company called um, Wild and Rayburn Yoga now. and um, Not yoga now, but Wild and Rayburn Yoga. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so just and both of them. We do events and retreats. And so, so, yeah, every year we've got two, two that we do in Greece and one that we do somewhere exciting. And next year is Bali and... And got if, ideas for a yoga and safari. <laughs> all right. So if someone was a beginner, would that be okay to go on? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, we've had all all ages, all levels. And um, it's sort of in, uh, so no, sort of normal retreat. Would it be where yoga throughout the day, relaxing in the evening, etc.? It's yoga in the morning, and then you have free time during the day, and then you have an evening yoga class. But it's a yin yoga class, so uh, sort of led meditation, deep stretching, like preparing you for bed just before dinner and then dinner and then yeah brilliant works quite well the yin and the yang uh, that's awesome and um if if you could say one thing to people thinking about uh starting yoga or even those practicing what would what would you what would it be 
well, keep practicing and all is coming. <laughs> keep practicing and all is coming. Brilliant. Okay, Katarina, it's been uh, awesome talking to you. Um, and people want to find you. You said before, uh, Frame Studios, go on katarinarayburnyoga.com. And I'd say definitely go and, and try a class with, with her because it will definitely be, be beneficial. So it's been great talking to you, Katarina. Have Thank a great you very day. Much. And uh, cheers for the interview. Speak soon. Bye. Bye. So, guys, that was episode 11 of Katarina Wayburn. And if you want to get in contact with her, as I said before, head over to her website at www.katarinawayburnyoga.com and you can find out all about her there. And any of you guys um, that are thinking about taking up yoga, definitely, I'd say, get involved if, if you're not in the London area uh, and you're anywhere around the world, I know, go to your local yoga studio or, or look for good reviews online and head there. I know that f- um, we really enjoy going to Frame, which is a really good uh, place to, it's, it's just got a very good vibe about it and it's not intimidating at all and everyone's just there to help. And the great thing about yoga is sometimes in the gym people feel like they're getting watched or they're being judged, whereas in yoga, your practice is about yourself. No one's really concentrating on anyone else except for themselves because it's all about you and it's time for you to improve and to get to know yourself and to relieve any stress so it's something that i would definitely recommend for basically everyone out there and especially sportsmen like me who have been really stiff as well and and i'm flexible from the years of playing sport and not doing as much stretching yoga is going to be brilliant for you and your overall health so definitely give that a go um anyway so that's that Next week's show is going to be, what I've said before, I reckon an already, I already know it's going to be an instant classic. It's with Terry Tiller and it's all about cancer. Um, going to go into why chemo doesn't work, why, why, why surgery doesn't work, why radiation doesn't work and what you can do instead. It's going to be a great interview. So that's what's coming up in on the next show, guys. So, if you're interested in anything like that, and I know most of us have been affected by cancer in some way, then you want to keep your eyes peeled for that one. Okay, guys? So, that's it for today. As always, head on over to www.reviveyourself.co for any articles and any information you, you want to know about health. There's loads of different topics covered there on my website. And if you want to get in contact with me, if you've got any health problems, then just go to the contact tab, give, send me a message, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And as always, say, guys, stay happy, stay healthy, and I'll speak to you soon. If you're struggling with gut issues, such as gas, bloating, constipation, diarrhea, indigestion, heartburn, and want to finally be able to eat the foods you love without the crippling after effects, then don't forget to head over to reviveyourself.co and pick up your free copy of The Healing Health Paradigm today.